Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Genius Podcast. My name is Karen Doyle, your host and founder of The Genius Project, an initiative for Catholic women designed to support and resource you towards growth in all areas of life, personal, spiritual and professional. We seek to do this through The Genius Podcast, our Catholic Women's Masterclass, which is a four-month journey of transformation, our online courses and our coaching programs for women. If you'd like to find out more about any of these initiatives, you can visit our website, www.geniusproject.co. And I'd love for you to come and join us on Instagram, genius underscore project underscore daily. And also you can watch the live recordings of these interviews on our Genius Project YouTube channel. So head on over to YouTube and check out the Genius Project. Just make sure you hit subscribe so that you can get notified every time a new episode drops. So on this week's episode of the Genius Podcast, I am joined by Bernadette Tui. She's a sister with the Missionaries of God's Love Sisters here in Australia. And she has a very particular focus on evangelization of young people and connecting with them where they're at. And one of the ways that she does this is through the music of Taylor Swift. So in this episode, we will be exploring seven lessons from a Christian Swifty. So if you are a parent or a teacher and you're walking with young people and you're trying to help them to discern the influences in popular culture, whether that's Taylor Swift music or other music or movies, or just some of those messages that are embedded in so much of our culture, this episode has a lot of insights for you as we explore these seven lessons from a Christian Swifty with Bernadette Tui. Enjoy. Well, Berna, welcome back to the Genius Podcast. It's lovely to have you back with us again and for what's going to be a really entertaining conversation, but welcome. Yeah, thanks so much, Karen. It's so good to be back with you. Yeah, you, what have you been up to in the the time between where are you living and what are you focusing on at the moment? Yeah, that's great. So I pro- it might have been six months ago, I think, yeah. I was on the podcast. So since then, um, yeah, I went to Ignite Conference. We have a lot of youth conferences, I think, over the summer, spring, summer yeah. kind of period. So, And I helped coordinate um, Summer School of Evangelization, which is run here in Sydney. Um, and we run retreats here as well and had a bit of a holiday over summer as Fantastic. well, which is really good. Um, yeah, and then the thing we're talking about today as well is um, Taylor Swift came to Australia and I know, right? went a bit crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> crazy. Uh, That's an understatement. Absolutely, yeah. I think they, they were saying it's the first, it's the biggest event they've had in Sydney since the Olympics in 2000. Yeah. Um, and brought in something like eighty million dollars in tourism revenue, and they even it's the first time it's ever happened where they relabeled the trains and the buses, the Swifty Express. So quite an impact, and that's what we're going to be diving into today: the impact and the phenomenon of Taylor Swift, and lessons from a Christian Swifty, which yeah. you identify as. Am I correct? Well, yeah, and I I put this together last October because I could see um. I know a lot of young people, we work a lot with young women. So I think um, something else, I don't know if we'll get to it, but something that I found interesting the last few weeks is um, a lot of older men were coming up to me and saying, why is she so popular? And and some of my friends that maybe don't work in youth ministry or things like that, they were just like, it came kind of from nowhere. Whereas Mm -hmm. I think for me, I could see it coming from like for ages really, because we work with young people and yeah, there's, and it covers quite a big, demographic as well I think people that, mm. that listen to um, Taylor Swift and it's like a subculture I'd go so far as saying it's almost even a religion as well mm-hmm. so being an evangelist and someone who wants to you know evangelize for Jesus um, you've got to look at what else is happening and what alternatives people are choosing um, yeah and then also looking at our Christian young women and um, you know their habits on social media, their habits in entertainment, what they're listening to and how to guide and have give those lessons kind of of discernment, how to yes. take on what's good and how to leave what's not good as well. So, um, yeah, so for me, I, I it didn't come as a surprise because I could see, um, yeah, I knew how big it was and could see it kind of coming. But I think it did t- take a lot of people by surprise <laughs> and left them asking a lot of questions. So mm. I've got a lot of questions um, and other people may have had questions as well. So, yeah, we can explore some of that. Today, yeah, fantastic. Hopefully. Yeah, Yeah. no, that's great. And I think one of the charisms of the Missionary of God's Love Sisters particularly is your work with young people and your work in evangelization, which has been so powerful. I know so many people that have been impacted by 
um, the missionary of God's loves, the priests and the sisters as well over many years. And you do such incredible work, um, particularly in this space. And I know your heart has always been really with young people, hasn't it? And, and coming alongside and accompanying them in their life. And sometimes we have to meet young people where they're actually at, as opposed to coming in over the top of them and saying, being, you know, you can't do this and this is the only way. We have to really look at how we can build relationship with them and, and accompany them in their life. And then it's through that relationship that we evangelize. And that's something that you do so beautifully. It's one mm -hmm. of your beautiful gifts. Yeah, no, thanks, Karen. Yeah, that's really true. And I think too, I think that everyone's called to do things differently. And I was praying mm -hmm. about that in preparation for this podcast and just thinking like it comes down to charism and how mm -hmm. you're built and how, what the Holy Spirit's doing in you. So the way that the Holy Spirit calls on me and our sisters to evangelize, um, it can be really different. And I think we need that diversity as well. And hopefully that will come across today as well that we can learn from each other yeah but I think the Holy Spirit also just um, taps on our heart differently according to our charisms and places us in different situations according yeah. to where the Spirit um, kind of needs us at a certain time and I think like for our sisters um, obviously like we're contemplative we spend a lot of time in prayer and we do work a lot in the church but there's also part of us that's thing to get out of the church as well and just to be with people and like one of the great examples of that in recent years was a couple of our sisters went on the amazing race which was that's a right risk yeah it was yeah. a huge risk they could have been portrayed in any way um for doing that or copped a lot of criticism or those sorts of things but I think um yeah that there's something in us that just like take us to the people that don't know Jesus you know take mm -hmm. us to the people um to what society is doing because we want to evangelize there and yeah there's yeah. no point just kind of staying in the church the whole time and yeah I think that that's something that really excites me as well is having a bit of an ear for what our yes. culture is doing and then yes. seeing the need for Jesus and then like really trying to speak into that as best we can. Yes. And you do that well. I was actually at that Ignite conference last year in Sydney and and my two daughters were there. They actually went along to your workshop because they are closet Swifties, I think. <laughs> that might be an understatement, but they do enjoy the music. And so they did go along to your workshop. And in that workshop, you sort of unpacked, I guess, helping young people to develop that skill of critical literacy, of looking at what is what are the messages and how that message is impacting me. And I think that's a great question that we need to be asking in life, just even as adults as well, what's the impact of the culture on me? So I, I guess, can you share a little bit about that workshop with us? Yeah, sure. So first of all, it was really popular. Like I didn't know and I kind of was like, oh, I want to give them something in this in this workshop. And so I'd prepared like a few songs. I went through and just really cherry picked like really clean <laughs> lyrics and um, made this little like mega mix of a few Taylor Swift songs because I wanted to really meet those young people like, you know, on that level. And um, the room was packed for the workshop. Mm. And funnily enough, I actually did a, a next workshop and it had one person that came along to it. My next workshop was something on prayer. And it made oh, me really gosh. see like, yeah. And it made me really see like that, um, that it works like that, that kind of meeting them on that level, that something that already has captured their imagination, that then I had a platform to actually say some quite challenging things, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. And I would say like the risk that I ran was, you know, people saying, well, are you condoning, you know, sexual music or, um, you know, are you, I was always really conscious. I was like, Jesus, please let this be about you more about you than it is about Taylor Swift. So I was hoping that I, that I struck that balance. Um, but yeah, but the kind of the numbers spoke for themselves. I think all of the Ignite sessions are really popular and there's a lot going on. So mm. um, yeah, but but so first of all, it was really, it was quite popular and I kind of tried to give something of myself in that as well to be like, oh, this is, um, yeah, so to kind of, um, yeah, engage in that way. And and I think it paid off. So, and the, the, the point of it was trying, like you're saying, to try and increase these um, skills of critical literacy. To, so to kind of say, well, what attracts us about, um, you know, the entertainment industry and music in particular, and particularly Taylor Swift. So someone who's had this mass effect, and we can see that now on the other side of the era to have been in Australia. And everyone's asking the question, like, why is she so popular? And so I think like, but that was my starting point. And then I got, then I was able to then have a conversation about what's also a bit fraught about, mm -hmm. you know, this artist in particular, but it goes across 
the whole entertainment industry and across mm. all of our leisures Popular and recreations culture. and pastimes. Yeah. yeah. So it was a, yeah. I, I think it was a, hopefully it was a success in being able to open up um, that topic with young yeah. people. But yeah, but with anyone of, of any age or maybe just offer a different insight, you know, for people yes. as to how to use pop culture to begin a conversation about deeper things. So it can be a bit of a springboard um, for opening up really good mm. juicy kind of topics that yeah. as Christians we want to be having with people. Amen. So good. So whether you love her or you hate her, and, and it seems that people only fall in one of two camps there, you can't deny just the impact that she has and the global superstar that she has. I don't actually think, I, I was in Sydney um, over that weekend of the conference and you just can't deny the impact. I don't think anyone's had quite an impact globally other than Princess Diana. I was trying to think of another female who has been photographed and pursued as much as some as and the only person I could think of was Lady Diana so yeah. it's really interesting so I'd love to dive into looking at her because lover or hater mm-hmm. um there are some very powerful things happening in her music and it'll be great to dive into that today one thing that struck me really watching it all unfold was a sense of idolatry that was the first thing that I it really struck me was young girls um, just sobbing, like hysterical. You'd see them on social media, like literally gut-wrenching sobbing when they caught sight of her. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like this is a real form of idolatry in some ways. But um, there's a there's a spectrum and a continuum, isn't there, of where people fall on that. But you've developed, I guess, a blog called Seven Lessons from a Christian Swifty. So I'd love to dive into that and I'd love you to just take us through each of those lessons and particularly our audience is, um, you know, there's many ages listening, but particularly for adults, I guess some of these lessons can help in conversations with young people and for the younger women, it's it's lovely just to reflect and to start to think and ask some of these deeper questions. So would you take us through your first big lesson? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm so glad that you mentioned that, um, yeah, like that that reaction that people had, because I think that was the first thing that captured my attention um, at some point. So I think it was during COVID lockdown, I was watching one of her um, stadium tours and I was just like, I kind of just watched it because I thought I wanted to understand like what's going on. And new Swifties were like really full on. But what surprised me was the kind of gut wrenching reactions that people had to her music when they see her live and the connection that they feel to her music. And what it got me thinking about a lot, and this was sort of what I posed to the young people as lesson number one, is that I really got in touch with that we're craving that connection and authenticity as well. And I think that there's um, people often say that that her music just connects on such a deep level with um, with where they're at. And I guess as an evangelist who knows that the gospel can do that, I think that's really fascinating that mm. in this um, in this age where where people maybe aren't coming to church or that they don't know the gospel, they don't know Jesus, that this is where they're going for someone who really understands, you know, their hopes and their dreams, heartbreak, which is a big theme that she yeah. has, even like wanting revenge, you know, and anger and things like that. I guess for us as Christians, we would say, well, that's what you take to prayer. Like when our prayer lives are going well, um, that's what we pour out at the feet of the Lord. But what I could see was that these young people who don't know to do that, maybe, um, that this is what they're turning to. And I see it as a religion, literally. And mm. in that previous tour she had, she was literally preaching and preaching, you know, messages of, of um, you know, you know what it's like when when life isn't going well and all that sort of thing. And that's where our young people are kind of are kind of turning to. Yeah, they're mm. connecting to and that they can see something that um, reflects what they feel inside. And so I guess like what, what I was talking to the young people, I suppose those of us that feel that in in secular music, I think that it, it is a really big outlet for people, you know, that you want to listen to music that that reflects something of what's going on in your, in your heart. But I think what I was saying to the young people and I'd say to people of any age is, that's your only one way of processing your emotions. And I don't know that it's the best way because it's kind of on a loop. Like if you're just listening to music Mm. to process your emotions, I think it can be a good kind of springboard. It might open up your heart or you might realise like, oh, that's really touched something deep in me, um, 
you know, like that anything can do that, a good movie or a, a song that really like, you know, gets you in the feels kind of thing. Um, but I also think that as Christians, we're called to kind of go a bit deeper with that, take it to prayer or um, to process it in a way that's actually going to lead us um, somewhere. So, and, and I think there's another kind of lesson in there, sub-lesson in there for us as Christians, and that is, well, if people are connecting to an artist with their deepest hopes and dreams and struggles and longings and pains, we actually want them to be connecting with us. And it sort of mm -hmm. begs the question, well, have we got the resources to do that? And if they were to come to church or if they were to encounter us, are we listening? And have we got a, a capacity to um, to walk with people in that? Um, and maybe even this kind of thing is a springboard to open up some of those conversation you know what's your mm. favorite song why does it touch you so deeply what is it about it and mm. to really deeply listen because I think that's where people are feeling seen they're feeling really heard um you know in this subculture or this religion I would say yes. as um being a 50 and I think that we've got the tools to do that in a way that leads to eternal life but are we are we approaching that in in the best way that we can? Mm. I guess that's the mm. first lesson I would no, say. It's, it's all about authenticity and connection that people are finding there. Um, yeah. yeah, and music is so powerful. I mean, as you're talking there, I'm thinking about my first breakup uh, when I was I think I was first year of uni or something, and I remember listening to Crowded House this album on repeat for the whole of summer, <laughs> just sitting out on the driveway, just listening to this music. And it's interesting because music can be very healing. Um, mm -hmm. It can inspire particular energies in us. Like, you know, people at the gym are listening to really motivational music. So yeah, it's interesting just to reflect on the power of music and then begs the question, what are we listening to? And is that good for our soul as mm -hmm. well? So yeah. it's funny talking about Taylor Swift. We, um, my daughter liked a particular song and I would deliberately change the lyrics just to annoy her. I mean, I'm such a good parent, <laughs> but uh, and she, she'd just roll her eyes at me. And um, my son actually said, no, no, no. And my husband were like, no, no, they're the wrong words. These are the right words. And I was like, how do you know the right words to the Taylor Swift song? I think it's because the girls have been blasting it um, for a little while, but it was quite funny because those words actually get in your head. Like I found just hearing the music in the shopping centres and around the place, like I don't know what it is about her music in particular, but it seems to stay in your mind in a more powerful way than some of the other songs that are playing in the shop, maybe because you just tuned in to, to her songs. But Yeah, but it is really influential. Like, And I went to a music workshop one time with a Christian music workshop um, for ministers and this girl said I um, she hadn't heard a song for about five years and she said, and then I heard it five years later and I knew every word. And she's yeah. like, so music has this capacity to just mm. hit our emotions and our memory. And, yeah, and I think that's what, what's happening when people are connecting mm. uh, in this kind of way. So it's, it's, it's tapping into something deep within it people, is. I think, and we've got to pay attention to that, I think, especially yeah. in some way. Yeah. And listen, your your next lesson is to never give up on hope. And I find that really interesting and why you've equated that lesson with Taylor Swift's music. Can you share a little bit about that idea of hope and why does she give people hope? What is she giving people hope into? Yeah, it's really true. And the other word I heard people talk about a lot was joy. Like people mm -hmm. that came to the concert, there's all sequins everywhere and a sense of unity and a sense of joy that was around um, being at something together and all of that sort of thing. But I guess I was looking for if is there golden threads here or is it all bad? I guess that was the exploration mm -hmm. I was going on when I was preparing what to say and especially because these are young people I was speaking to that that already listened to this kind of music I was like is there any golden threads here and I was like well I think that there is a lot of hope like in the story and if I was you know we mentor a lot of young women and I think that um that there is a pretty good model of resilience and getting back up again in her particular story she's um you know a lot of our young women and um, people of any age now maybe have experienced things like bullying or um, Taylor Swift got cancelled at one point. And I think that's a big fear that people have now that there can be this complete rejection of who you are and how do you get back up after that? Um, I think a lot of young people might have experienced, you know, friendship breakdown or relationship breakdown or 
things like that. Mm. And and I kind of I, like obviously that I don't think um Taylor's done that perfectly in any way. Like and this is where I was sort of teaching discernment. But I think um that yeah that if you're a parent kind of pointing saying you can get up and go again. Like and if Taylor Swift is the person that idolizing, maybe they haven't fallen in love with Jesus yet then you can say, it's okay, get up and try again. And, um, yeah, mm. that you can point to someone who who has yeah. done that in a particular way. So I found that really interesting. Um, and she speaks into a lot of issues that I think young people can struggle with. She speaks into um, having poor self-image and mm. um, body image particularly um, and things like that. So I just feel like that, you know, when people are looking for role models, um, I feel like it's okay to say, you know, if they're if they're listening to her anyway, well, that that is a message that they can that they can glean from, um, mm. yeah, from what she's kind of um, preaching on, I guess. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I just found that that was good, and like you said, that there was a lot of um, kind of joy around and a sense of unity, and that there was something really positive, I think, um, in and amidst all of the the hype mm. and all of that in amidst, um, yeah, the Taylor kind of. Uh, culture so yeah yes. so that's sort of a goal yeah. that I wanted to, to draw yeah out. I think that's a good point that you make that sometimes in the church you can look out and you think oh, the people who don't have God are having more fun like they're more joyful and and sometimes it is the case I think it's a good reminder for us in the church that um, we're just we're living lives that are attractive that we are expressing that joy and creating I guess opportunities and environments for young people and everybody to experience joy and and just recreation and fun for the sheer sake of the enjoyment of just having fun. Like, I think that sometimes we've lost a little bit of the art of fun and play and recreation, even in our lives as adults, we can lose a sense of that. And I think you're right. She taps into sort of bringing us beyond ourselves into joy. Um, and that's what the definition of play is really. Mm, yeah. So, yeah, I think so too. And sharing that with others and creating kind of communal moments, you know, you might not be able to get all of your friends along to, um, you know, to your praise and worship night or to your church or that sort of thing, but you can share moments together. Um, mm. Yeah. Of, um, yeah. Of celebration. Um, mm. in this kind of life. So important. Yeah. It's really important. I know, remember back to uh, lockdowns, which I don't like to remember back to very often, but one of the, the saving graces and the blessings in that was Alyssa Aegis and her husband did their live stream. So they're, um, they have a top 40 cover band in Melbourne called Unlimited and, and they're fabulous. And they just took to, so similar, that resilience piece of pivoting and doing different things during the lockdowns, they took their band online and every Friday night they did an hour live stream and everyone was in the chat and it was just, it was the highlight of the week during lockdowns. Mm -hmm. And again, it was just that music bringing you out of what you're currently experiencing into joy. And yeah, it's very powerful. So I, yeah. I think there's a real invitation um, for us to be really aware of creating those environments where we can experience joy and fun. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and a lot of our um, sisters are singers and we normally sing praise and worship and things like that. Yeah. But one of our favourite things to do is a good old karaoke night as well. And it's just the sisters around <laughs> and all the secular songs come out. And yes. um, yeah, it's sort of just something that kind of brings people together um, as well. So yeah. I I'd have to say that's one thing you do very well. The sisters do that very well, that cultivating that spirit of joy and fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And we'll get to the other side of that a little bit later. But mm. I think too, like bearing in mind, so I think, think some of this is also, can you pull out golden threads of um, of some of the secular culture? And I think particularly if you're starting a conversation, yeah, these would be some of the, some of the things that I think we can mm. look to and, and say, oh, that in and of itself, yeah, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So lesson number three, teamwork makes the dream work. What do you mean by that? That's an interesting yeah. phrase. Yeah, like I think if that was another golden thread that I just felt like that's actually something I think that our young people need to hear at the moment. I think that um, there's a lot of individualism that goes on and obviously like that whole cult of the influencer is a very individual kind of pursuit. And I found, and especially like Taylor Swift is a, um, you know, all the, a lot of these big names, are, it's just their name. So you can think oh, it's just them on their mm -hmm. own. And I think that a lot of our young people are maybe, and all of us really, we can struggle with that connection, like in a post-COVID kind of world, you know, we're working from home a lot more maybe, or we're feeling like we've got to do it all on our own. 
And I think I was like, well, if so many people are looking at Taylor Swift as a role model, like I think that she is someone who has really talked up the people around her and you can see um, their influence. Her dad hasn't missed a show. Apparently her publicist, it must be crazy talented to be able to do what she does. Her band, some of her band members have been with her since the very beginning mm. and she collaborates with really amazing other artists and musicians. And so I think that's really interesting to see, well, they've all collaborated to make her what she is today. And so that when our young people sometimes feel that, or all of us really feel that pressure of I've got to be somebody, it's like, well, yeah, but maybe you're the person that's helping somebody else achieve their dream. Or who is going to help you achieve your dreams? Like there's no shame in saying, I'm not the best at this, but I want your help, um, you know, to get alongside mm. and to help me. And even to point to someone like Taylor Swift isn't the world's best piano player. She's not even the world's best vocalist, I would say. Like there's other artists. You might get that, shot down from that. some of those diehards. <laughs> oh, no, I can they would agree. No, but it's true. Yeah, it, yeah. it is it's true. It's totally true. Yeah. It's more like that the summer's greater than the past. Like that yes. she's collaborated yeah. with great people and that she's um her gifting is more so in her songwriting and that capacity to connect that's what she's really tapped into I think so I think it's great to kind of say that to young people and say well you don't have to be the best but you can actually the, the way people get to be the best is by really leaning on the skills of those around them and that's a basic Christian yeah. thing all using our gifts to kind that's of right. collaborate and to um to help each other to achieve the goal that we set out to. Um, so, yeah, so I just thought that that's something that I think we need to be looking at and kind of celebrating in this era mm. as well. So mm. that was another little golden thread. I just thought I'd like to say if there's so many eyes on this woman right now, well, maybe that's something that we can take away from, um, mm. from what we're seeing. Yeah, fantastic. All right, so lesson number four, forgiveness sets you free. Yeah. This is an this interesting is one, one because as yeah. I listen to her songs, you know, like and, and I have listened to some of them, there's not a lot of forgiveness. There's a lot of revenge and a lot of aggro and a lot of hate. And I guess she's channeled her pain in a particular way. So, um, I mean, full credit to someone who gets knocked down and keeps getting back up again. But there's not a theme of forgiveness. So what are your thoughts there? Yeah, and I think this is where, like, I think my whole thing about entertainment, yours too probably, you can be the kind, and we'll get to this a little bit later in the discernment kind of question, which is the next one, but it's the whole thing of like, well, what do you let into your mind and at what point do you just go and that's enough? Like, so I think that um, knowing secular music, like that's totally optional as a Christian. I don't think it's completely 100% necessary, but it does open doors. So, you know, you can be at a wedding and be on a dance floor with people and it's a point of um, connection. But I think there's got to be, if you're a Christian, and still saying to the young people at Ignite, and it's a message for all of us really, as a Christian, you're the gatekeeper of your of your heart. And so for some people and in some circumstances, you've just got to say, well, well, no, absolutely nothing. Like, you know, this artist or I'm just not going to do secular music or, you know, be off social media, whatever you need to do absolutely like go and do it um but I think that even if you're someone that's like yeah I'll listen to a bit of secular music you've got to always be really thinking like what mm. am I taking in and um and yeah this is one of the things that I was like Whoa, wow if this woman's speaking to such a big part of our culture I think this is one of the biggest um, yeah, like clashes I could see with the gospel of Taylor as opposed to the gospel of Jesus, that um, there's sort of no kind of redemption, there's no grace, I think. And um, yeah, I've been reading some really great books, even secular books on grace and how that's really so needed. And yeah, yeah and obviously um, this is where the entertainment industry is going to let you down, right? Because she's not putting herself up there as, you know, a role model. That's just kind of an accident from being so popular and selling so many of the mm -hmm. songs. Um, but, yeah, I think that's kind of where, um, yeah, where I'd start to say, well, think about that. Like, how does that make you feel, you know, that it's forgiveness and having grace and moving on that helps set you free. And so I think like listening to, you know, breakup songs on repeat and those sorts of things, I think you've got to really say like, oh, is this making me dwell on, um, you know, the hurts of the past? Mm. And there's other things that we can do to to kind of move on um, from that and being really honest, being really accountable, 
repenting, all those sorts of things really um, set us free. So I think that's where, um, yeah, I was sort of think that that's where the discernment really um, needs to come in. And for me in a particular way, um, yeah, this is something that I just think there's a, this, yeah, there's a clash there and yeah. um, something to be mindful of, I think, and every secular pursuit we do has its limit, the point where you're like, okay, that's something I don't want to absorb or I can question. I can um, kind of interrogate like, oh, this is, yeah, this isn't actually a very good part of that, um, yeah, that influence upon me. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's so important. I think that whole area of forgiveness, I mean, I did an interview with somebody recently and and they were talking about just the the fruit of unforgiveness in their life and how we don't live in a culture really that fosters or supports an attitude of forgiveness or grace or cutting Mm -hmm. people some slack. It's very much, it's a hard, fast, cut you off, um, you know, shun you, cancel you, whatever it is. And so that's coming through in our culture at large. So it's it's a good um, good thing to just reflect on of how forgiving are we being and how are we cultivating grace in our life? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess too, like how I'm trying to set this up would be, I don't know if people are having conversations with, you know, you're, if you're a teacher in a school or if you're a parent, um, you know, the, the temptation could be like, well, don't listen to it at all. But I would say, well, maybe have a mature conversation and say, well, yeah. what does this song, you know, make you feel like, or say like, oh, that's, yeah, we wouldn't kind of say that or just kind of being the gatekeeper. I suppose parents kind of have to do that in a way for their kids. But as adults, we have to do that, you know, for um, our souls as well mm. and be the gatekeeper of our soul and discern what that's mm. going to look like. Yeah, yeah, great. All right. Mm. So lesson number five, you are what you eat. Yeah. What does this one mean? <laughs> well, this is just a continuation of the same, but yeah. I just kind of broadened it a little bit and just to say to teach that skill. So that we have to think about what consumes us. And I would think most of the people listening to the podcast would know that for themselves, but I guess it's just always being conscious of, and this in the workshop I did at Ignite, I kind of blew it out to being, to including all different sorts of um, things that had a little poll on the screen where, um, you know, I was just sort of saying, well, what are the things that draw you away from faith, hope and love? And, you know, for a lot of people, it's their phone or social media. Um, but but like you said before, the songs that we listen to, um, they really get into our into our subconscious. And um, and I guess, yeah, that, that you've got to be looking for, is there good fruit here or bad fruit? And I think like one of the good fruit I can see we were talking about before is like um, playing music, um, especially if the lyrics are good, it can really boost your mood and it mm. can help you, you know, create a fun atmosphere with your friends or can be a point of connection. But I think some of the bad is just if it feels like it, you know, it brings your soul down, it makes your soul feel sad or um, if it leaves that sort of agitation in ourselves that we know is not of the Holy Spirit, um, anything that we do, you know, that, that leads us to that, we know that's not the Holy Spirit. And, um, yeah, it's a good way to kind of moderate our mm. our habits and behaviours and things to to just be on the guard, on, yeah, on guard for that. Yeah. And if you're someone that's influential in the lives of young people to be doing that on their behalf or teaching them that skill as to how to do that. So maybe there's certain songs I don't listen to or there's certain parts of, um, yeah, of the culture that we that we kind of draw the line at and I guess everyone has to decide that for themselves Mm. um and if you're influential in the lives of young people you're doing that with them or on behalf of them as well so yes I think obviously that's yeah that's really important yeah fantastic Mm. these are great Berna I'm quite Mm. uh, quite enjoying these number six is finding your true vocation true fulfillment how do you link that with Taylor Swift yeah, so I think how I set this workshop up was a little bit of an affirmation sandwich. So I decided to put the the challenging stuff kind of in the middle. So we're kind of coming back out out yeah. of that again now. And I think um like I think that you've got to yeah you, you've got to think about well what what sort of happening here and if people are choosing you know to to have her as a role model and there's been a lot of ink built about um just how um influential Taylor Swift is and. Um, and how she's gained this notoriety and this yeah. sort of popularity. And I think, I mean, time will tell, right, if this is just a facade, but I think that, um, you know, from what I've seen, you can see someone who's doing something that they really love. And so, again, if we're guiding young people through or if we're kind of saying, well, is there anything good to be gained from this whole thing that has been, 
is it's like, well, what makes you come alive in that way? Like that, mm. I, I honestly don't think that she's in it for the money. Like that at some point you'd be like, I'm sick of this. I can't do this anymore. Like that money, you know, could only motivate you so far, but genuinely like operating in your gifts, I think is something that brings all of us to life. And so I suppose, yeah, for um, the young people that, that I've been walking with and for all of us, it's about, well, what's the equivalent for you? Like, you know, um, yeah, this artist is, is you know, travelling all over the world, barely gets a break. She can't even get out of bed the next day. She wrote after her concert because she's just pushed her body to the extreme. I guess it's like, well, what does that for you? You know, um, for a lot of people, it's their kids and their family. For me, it's, you know, evangelising and spreading the gospel. Um, but for each of us, there's something where we have to, yeah, it's exciting to discover mm. um, what gives us that motivation and, um, yeah, what would push us to the limits of our human strength kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think obviously for the young people, if, if that's who's largely in her demographic at the time of life and they're trying to work that out and they're searching mm. for that. So it opens up a good conversation about what is that for other people and how yeah. can they kind of emulate that in their life as well. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great lesson to to draw out of it because I think when people get enamoured by pop stars or movie stars, then they're like, oh, I want to be like them. And there is a sense of that with some of the, you know, the diehard Swifties of I want to be just like her. But it's taking that lesson and, and sort of giving it a bit of objectivity to say, okay, you might have a really terrible voice and you might not be able to dance, so obviously you're not going to be her, but how can you be inspired or, or take those lessons of looking for your own gifts, which is what you're saying. And mm. and also obviously it's also helping young people, we're sort of going through this with our kids at the moment, of helping them discover what makes them feel fulfilled. So what are their God-given gifts? How has God uniquely wired them? What is their unique motivational design? Because even for adults too, we have to tap into that. Otherwise we'll end up doing things that don't fulfill us in life. So it's so important to do that. And obviously she's very fulfilled in what she does. Um, mm. with music so yeah great that's yeah. a really great lesson to draw and yeah. looking at how people can uniquely discover their own gifts yeah 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 and it leads to the next one so the last one was on um that Jesus can offer riches the yes. world cannot and I think something that I was just busting to say in that one but I was like oh it's also kind of weaved into this last kind of lesson was that I think as Christians we just look at well what the bottom line in all of this you know mm. that I think um that that would that be enough like would traveling the world and um you know singing your heart out to a bunch of people would that be enough and I actually reckon for a lot of Christians that wouldn't be enough like that wouldn't satisfy me well, in a way because no. I want to bring them to Jesus if that makes sense yeah. so I feel like that there's something where um, yeah, my last lesson was just like, well, let's open our minds even more, you know, and that I suppose um, that your listeners and that the people I was speaking to at this Ignite conference, they're being captivated by the gospel and they're just seeing like there's a bigger story, a richer story to be told here and that yeah. there's a place like, you know, the um, the footage I've seen of people at the concerts and things like that where they're crying and connecting and there's this real kind of longing and maybe even hurting that's going on in people. We kind of know that it's Jesus that can answer that and that our vocations have to be centred on him if they're ever going to um, fulfil us. So I think that, um, yeah, that that was something I was really um wanting to sort of drive home is to say well would it be enough for you like even mm. with all the you know private jets and all of the the admiration like we know as Christians that it's that's not enough you know you can go home from concerts mm -hmm. like that as the, the artist or be so rich and be so empty like we know that it just isn't um isn't fulfilling um so yeah so that was sort of where I wanted mm. to to land the, the session and, and I guess it's something for all of us to think about today maybe you know there's been a sense of of envy or like oh wouldn't it be nice you know to to have that life or to be able to you know be in that hotel room or even to afford a ticket you know a lot of people had mm. to blow a lot of money even to be at this concert and there might have been a little bit of envy around but I just think don't worry like there's so much more that Jesus can offer us the fulfillment that you know one night being at a at a stadium can't um can't fulfill us 
um, yeah, in that sort of way. So, um, yeah, so I think like that that was something that I was trying to um, trying to get across as well. And I think the other thing that I came to as well is as well, do you know what, if you are having a really awesome night at the Taylor Swift concert or a fun time on the dance floor or a song is just really hitting you in the right spot, that's God that's putting that desire in you anyway. So if an entertainer is having this massive influence on you, it's actually God that mm. put that desire in your heart to start with anyway. It's just a, an expression of the Holy Spirit, the longing in you for God that that is being tapped into. And it's God that put that desire in your heart in the first place. So I think, um, yeah, I think that was just something really important for me just to kind of, ground ourselves in um yeah and how much bigger God is how much more satisfying that mm. you know um all the underbelly of, of pop culture is the fame and fortune and capitalism and idolatry like you said before Karen that goes along with it yeah. and I think with the gospel we're following Jesus there's no underbelly if that makes sense the only underbelly of it is the cross that it's a difficult thing to do and that not everybody um you know is able to do it that we're called to something quite difficult so mm. yeah but for us I just felt like it's, it's all good news there's no sort of yes but kind of like mm. we have to do with secular culture with God it's just all good and that yeah he can satisfy us um yeah so much more than anything else could yeah man so true well I love those seven lessons from a Christian Swifty they're they're very creative and it's great that you've just spent that time and I imagine in all the work that you do that will just come through more and more in your interactions with young people and the retreats that you do the summer schools everything I know that the young people think so much of you yeah, and I guess it's just always having that eye open. Like some of this you can't avoid, can you? Like that, and and maybe you know a lot of people want to, and I think that's sometimes the best decision as well is to turn the radio off and not engage yes. this. But I think some people, a lot of your you know listeners, or teachers, or parents, or things like this, it's coming to them. <laughs> and I guess it's like, well, how do we engage? How do we walk with people through that? Or if we're someone that. Um, you know, wanting to engage with um, with yes. secular society, how do we kind of speak into the longings that that people have got? And I think, yeah, that we've seen sort of an alternative as to where people are turning to now. And sometimes the first step in telling them about Jesus can be engaging with where they're at and yeah. asking them about the joy, asking them about what they're connecting with, and then maybe offering them a really compelling alternative, which is mm. the gospel of Jesus. So, yeah. And so true. And I think you you point out that, you know, many of the listeners are mums and teachers and people working with young people. And I hope and pray that your lessons have given them something to think about in terms of points of connection with the young people in their life, whether they're children or whether they're young people that they're ministering to. But it's fantastic. And Tell me, um, Bernard, where can women go to find out more about Missionaries of God's Love if they're interested in looking at your retreats or some of the work that you're doing with young people? Yeah, great. So we've got a website, so mglsisters.org, and, um, yeah, all of our retreats and events that we've got coming up are on there, Um, our blogs and things like that. So, yeah, our passion is to draw people away from the craziness of all of this and into a treat and to really hear that love story of Jesus. So, um, yeah, if you're someone that's seeking that, um, if you're wanting that for your um, for your young people as well, um, yeah, we're connected to the disciples of Jesus as well. And there's lots of really amazing opportunities for young people to hear about the gospel through them. And our cousins over at Ignite, I'm sure, would love to see your young people if you're wanting to send them um, to something where they can just really hear the gospel um, proclaimed in a really fresh and in- engaging way. So, yeah, yeah we just want to bless all the youth ministries that are happening at this time because um yeah it's not an easy time to engage young people but I think we've just got the best message and so when we can capture the imagination of um of young people I think there's so much to be to be gained we've got um, such a beautiful message and we want to capture their attention with that amen well thank you so much Berner and God bless you and the wonderful work that you're doing with young people 
thank you so much, Karen. Bless you too. It's so good to um yeah to chat to you today. Thank you. Well, there are seven lessons for you from a Christian Swifty, and I hope that there was something in there that might help and equip you in your work with young people, in your parenting, and even in your own personal life. How we discern some of those influences in popular culture. Ladies, the doors are now opened to the Catholic Women's Masterclass and I would love for you to come and join us. If you are a woman who is feeling burnt out, who is feeling like you need to be reoriented, I guess, for the next part of this year, if you're a woman who doesn't know what her gifts are or you're just struggling to overcome some of the limiting mindsets in your life, This Masterclass is a four-month journey of transformation where we address all of those things. And we really help you to develop some rhythms of renewal that will help you flourish in life and live into the wholeness and the fullness of the abundant life that Christ speaks about. And not only speaks about, but that he promises you. If you'd like to find out more about the Masterclass, please visit the website www.geniusproject.co. Once again, it would be so helpful if you could head on over to the podcast platform that you are listening to this on and leave a rating and a review. This really helps support the work of the Genius Project and I would be so grateful for your support in this area. Until next week, ladies, have a beautiful week. God bless you and I look forward to you joining me again next week.